Your Excellencies, it is a very great honor to invite to the podium the General Superintendent of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry, Pastor W.F. Kumuhi. May we please put our hands together as he gives us the word, the word for this 2021 State House Christmas season. We may please rise in honor to the word of the Lord we are about to receive and to the great servant of the Lord. Please, let's continue to applaud until he stands behind the pulpit. You are welcome, our Father in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the worship. Thank you for all the Bible readings. We're asking, Lord, that tonight, in the brief moment we have, you speak to every heart in Jesus' name. Bless everyone, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And the old church said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. It's been a wonderful night and a glorious night as we have remembered the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And from the Bible readings we've heard from Isaiah, from the Psalms, from Matthew, and from Luke, I see a story. Number one is the story of desired expectation. The people were expecting that the peace were lost in the Garden of Eden, that that peace will come back to us. And the psalmist spoke about that, Isaiah spoke about that, Micah spoke about that, all the prophets spoke about that. And because of that, the children of Israel were in great expectation. And it is the story of the desired expectation. And I was seeing in Matthew and in Luke, in the Bible reading, that an angel came and made an announcement and gave a song. And we've celebrated tonight with all the various uh, singers and the groups that came. And I call that the song of divine visitation. The Lord has sent his only begotten son and is um, at his birth visiting us. There was a singing, there was singing. And it's the song of divine visitation. And then the angels came. That's Luke chapter 2. As they all came, they chorused all that the first angel had said. I see that as a symphony of delightful jubilation. There was joy. And it said it's joy not only on earth, but also in heaven. And even till this time, when a person comes to the Lord, there is joy in the presence of the angels. The shepherds then, after they had heard, they went to see Mary and Joseph, and they saw the baby. And they rejoiced, not only they rejoiced, they came back and they told everybody what they had heard. And I see that as a sanctity of beautiful proclamation. Number one is expectation. Number two is um, visitation. Number three is jubilation. And then we have proclamation. Tonight, I want to zero in on Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, with verses, um, verses 13 and 14. It says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Tidings, good news, the gospel, and the good news that the Lord has remembered us. He remembered his covenant, and now he sent his only begotten son, so that we can be saved, saved from sin, saved from self, saved from suffering, and saved from anything that oppresses us. And it says it's good news for all people. And then it says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And then in verse 13 it says, and suddenly a multitude, there was an angel, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. 
praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward man. Now the message tonight from those verses I read to you now is the angel's announcement from on high to me, to you, to us, to this nation, and to every nation, to the whole world, at that time, at this time, and until it will come again. Here is the announcement. Here is the message of the angel and the angels from on high. Number one, I see a history here developing from the Garden of Eden when God gave the promise and then going on to Moses and going on to the prophets and going on to the psalmist and coming on to the end of the Old Testament. And the story would develop in the history of distinct revelation, the revelation that Christ will come. Revelation that the Son, the Savior, will be born. The revelation that Christ, the Redeemer, will come. And the Old Testament, from beginning to the end of the Old Testament, tells the story, the history of distinct revelation. Number two is a story of divine realization. When he came, then we realized all the blessings the Lord, God of heaven, had promised, a realization came. And this is divine realization. It was back of his word that he will fulfill all that he had said. And we hear the story from the angel, from the shepherds, and then from the apostles and the preachers that preach in the New Testament, the story of divine realization concluding I come to the glory of destined restoration. The glory of destined restoration. Number one is the history of distinct revelation. We read in the Psalms and the Psalms, the Psalmist said this day have I begotten him and that gives us the irreversible decree to be revealed. The Lord said, I have made a decree, which means nothing could reverse that. He made a decree that the Savior will come, he has come. He made a decree that our deliverer will come, and he has come. And now, as we believe in him, that decree is fulfilled in our lives. Number one there is the irreversible decree that is revealed. Number two is the irresistible dominion. Remember, Isaiah told us, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government, the reign, the rule, the dominion shall be upon his shoulders and will call his name wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, and he is the prince of peace and the father of eternity. That's the irresistible dominion that God has remembered. He has remembered us. And because he remembered us, he gave us a savior and gave us a Lord and gave us the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Micah even tells us where Christ will be born. And when those wise men came from these, desiring and asking, where will that king be born? And Herod called all those uh, priests and said, where is Christ to be born? And they went back to Micah chapter 5 verse 2. And it is the irrefutable descent that is recorded. It had, they had recorded that. And you could go to the record. And today too, we can go to the record of the word of God. Not a jot, not a teacher will be missing out from the word of God. The history of distinct revelation. The decree, the dominion, and the descent. Number two is the story of divine realization. The angel came and announced, he has come. We are waiting for him, he has come. David spoke about him, he has come. Moses spoke about him, he has come. Isaiah and all the prophets spoke about him. Here is realization, and it's a divine realization. As we think about what the angels said, and what all the other angels chorus along with him, 
to see great redemption for all people. It says, we bring good tidings, good news of great joy to all people. It's not only for the west or for the east or for the north or the south. It's for everyone. And when Christ was going, he said, preach the gospel, that good news to every creature. It's available for everyone. And the Lord makes salvation, makes the grace of God and the mercy of God available for everyone. Redemption for all people. And then we're told as we look at the epistles that the reason why Jesus came is to bridge the gap. There's been a gap, there's been separation, alienation from the God of heaven. And now when Christ came, that brought reconciliation for alienated people. Our sins have separated us from the Lord and Christ has come so that it will reconcile us unto the Father. And number one is the redemption. And now that redemption plays out as each one will give himself or herself unto the Lord. Reconciliation for alienated people. And then uh, when that angel said what he said, a multitude of angels came and there was jubilation and rejoicing and that jubilation did not stop there when Christ began his ministry because joy everywhere you remember there was a man a woman that had lost her only child and Jesus said weep not and touch that a coffin and then rose again there was joy everywhere and when any any person comes to the Lord today you're seeking the Lord you're seeking peace of mind you're seeking reconciliation with God, when we come to the Lord one by one, or in families, it says that joy in heaven, that's rejoicing for afflicted people. And I have seen quite a lot of people that were afflicted, that were suffering, and when they hear about Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Redeemer, and Jesus the Deliverer, they come to the Lord, they put their face in the Lord, there is rejoicing for afflicted people. The Lord the word of God said Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. As it caused joy at that time today, it's still causing joy in every heart. Every heart that will believe him. Take note of those three things. Number one is redemption for all people. Number two is reconciliation for alienated people. And then number three is rejoicing for afflicted people. We have heard about the history. We've heard about the story. And by the way, that word history, when you analyze it and apply it to Jesus Christ, everything is about his story. His story, that is history. And when that story is revealed in our lives, redemption will come realization will come and the goodness of the Lord which is the good news that the Lord has provided for everyone it will come and now I come to number three and it's the glory because that angel said and those angels said glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill toward all men peace to, for all men as we think about our world, that's one thing we're looking for. Peace, personal, peace in the whole nation and peace in the whole world. And as the angels sang and as the angels announced that we can have peace on earth. Number one is peace for the individual and for the family too. Number two is peace all around. And number three is peace in the whole earth. As you examine uh, that verse minutely and you say the angel said there'll be peace on earth. We don't even have peace now in uh, every nation and we don't have peace in the community of nations and yet the promise and the prophecy is there will be peace in the whole earth and it will happen. Now as we think about peace there are three aspects I'm looking at. Number one is personal peace through the mediator. The Bible says he referring to Christ, he 
in referring to our substitute and our savior, the one who has come to die for us, he is our peace. The moment I give my life to Christ, I surrender my life to Christ, my past, I hand over to him to be forgiven. My present, I give over to him to be transformed. And my future, I transfer to him to watch over. Then I have personal peace through the mediator who loved me and he gave himself for me. And he's no respecter of persons. He does it for everyone. He can do it for you like he has done it for many other people. Personal peace through the mediator. The question is, as you look at your heart, as you look at your life, as you look at your family, as you look at everything surrounding you, what do you find? Do you have the peace you desire? It's in Christ. And when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ against us, personal peace through himself, the mediator. There's a verse that's very important in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace because the trust in you. That leads me to number two, perfect peace of mind like the masters. That is, like the master had, he had perfect peace on the stormy sea, he had peace before his um, the persecutors, he had peace. And when he went to the cross, he had peace. There was peace every time. And he is our Lord, he is our Redeemer, he is our Savior. And when you totally give yourself to him and your mind and your trust and your will, everything is centered on him, he gives perfect peace of mind like himself. Now, the final scene is the peace that is to be on earth. At that time, he's coming again. In fact, he said, he told his own disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And then he said something, and when I've gone to prepare the place for you, I will come again. He's coming again. And when he comes again, number one, he's going to set up the millennial reign. As I spoke about that, Micah spoke about that, and the New Testament spoke about that. He's coming again and he's going to establish what is referred to as the millennial reign. Number one is personal peace through the mediator. And you can have that today. Anywhere we are, whosoever shall call on the name of God shall be saved and the rift and the conflict and the separation and the gulf between us and the holy God will be bridged. And then we have personal peace through his mediation. Number two, we can have perfect peace as you go up and down, as you think about about the future, and as you want to put your hand on what am I going to do tomorrow without peace, perfect peace, how can we do everything well to do? Number two, then uh, there is perfect peace of mind like the master had. And I pray that as we link up to the Lord and believe in the Lord, that perfect peace of mind will be ours in Jesus' name. And when he comes to establish his kingdom, when he comes to establish his reign, when he comes to do what Isaiah said he will do, that the government shall be upon his shoulder, and then that the zeal of the Lord shall make that to happen, and then he will rule, he will reign, he will not just rule in the heart of a man, of a woman, of an individual, he will rule, he will reign in the heart of everyone all over the world. World, and then we'll have perpetual peace in the millennium. And we're going from personal to perfect and to perpetual. And linking with the Lord, trusting the Lord, having confidence in the Lord, all that can be accomplished in our lives. But you must make a personal decision. You must understand you don't have everything you need. You don't have every, everything you desire. You don't have everything you want to realize. But then as you come to the Lord Jesus Christ that we have been singing about tonight and the 
angels have declared of the redemption that he brings to man. That personal faith in the Lord can give you, number one, personal peace. Number two, perfect peace. And then, uh, as he takes hold of you and he leads you onto the very final end, uh, you'll have that perpetual peace with him uh, in uh, the millennium. Let's recap a little the expectation. If we expect, it will come. Because those Israelites, those Jews have been expecting that he will come. The Messiah will come. The Prince of Peace will come. Expectation. That led them because they were expecting, expecting redemption for the people of God. There was visitation. And if you expect and you say, Lord, I don't have everything I ought to have. I depend on you and trust in you. And you put your faith personal in the Lord, there'll be that divine revelation. And then the jubilee that comes, that Christ has come. It brings joy in your heart. And you rejoice because your name is written in heaven. And now when you have the expectation and you have the visitation and you have the jubilation, the joy of the Lord, which becomes your strength, you now have a duty like those shepherds. When those shepherds have seen and they have heard, they left that scene and they went everywhere and they shared what they have heard and what they have seen and what they had known. The same thing, you have the good news and it is replicated, reproduced in your life. You go to tell other people and that is proclamation, the sanctity of that proclamation. And I pray that the word of God will bear fruit in our hearts as we trust the Lord and we believe in him, everything he has come to provide for every one of us will be partakers of that in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. As we have uh, this moment, I want you to personally think, what does Christ mean to you? We've been singing uh, all night from various perspectives about the coming of Christ. What has that meant to you? Have you got the personal peace that comes with reconciliation with God through Jesus Christ? You can Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And then for the Lord to visit you, like he visited those uh, shepherds, and then for them to have the joy that Christ brings in his salvation. That can be yours today. And then after that jubilation, the joy of the Lord in your heart, you go out with that good news, the gospel. Tell everybody, like those uh, shepherds, told the people that they left back in their fold. Father, we thank you at this time. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, and Lord, the King of glory, Lord of lords and King of kings. We thank you for what he has come to do, and we thank you for what he's able to do in every life now. We pray, Lord, you grant each one as he believes, as she believes, the peace that is personal, the peace that is perfect, and lead us to the point where we'll have the peace that is perpetual. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Pastor W.F. Kumiyi. General Superintendent of the Deeper Christian Life Ministry.